Today, I'm going to compare the most popular graphics card on Steam, which as we all know is the GTX 1060, a graphics card that's been in the top spot since I was a medium-sized child. Uh, but we're going to compare that to a gaming laptop that you can buy for under $700 if you shop around. The laptop in question is the HP Pavilion something or other. HP names everything the Pavilion for some reason. You could conceivably go to buy an HP Pavilion gaming laptop and end up with like an HP Pavilion aroma dispenser. I don't know why they do that, but I'll have the exact one linked in the description below. Now, for just clarity reasons, HP did send me the unit. I sent them an email asking for one and they sent it to me and that was about the extent of our correspondence. So just so that you know. Now the pavilion in question has a Ryzen 5 5600H in it with a GTX 1650. I don't think it's a max Q because it doesn't specify it anywhere and the boost frequencies do kind of correspond with a desktop GTX 1650. And beyond that, if you Google the serial number on the actual GPU die, it shows that it's a GDDR6 variant of the 1650. And finally, performance wise, this laptop does only have eight gigs of RAM in it, considering that it's the base variant, which may disadvantage it a little bit, considering that we're comparing it to as close to the most popular gaming configuration on Steam as I could get, so the desktop system is gonna have 16 gigs of RAM in it. So just bear that in mind while looking at the benchmarks. Now in terms of the desktop system, we have a Ryzen 5 2600 in it with 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz and then a GTX 1060. It's a six gig 1060 with probably the worst cooler on a 1060 ever. It runs very hot. Uh, but again, we'll have a look at all of this stuff a bit later on in the video. Having a closer look at the HP Pavilion for a $700 gaming system, it's pretty good. Uh, the chassis feels nice and solid. There's a good amount of ventilation on the bottom with a reasonably sized cooling solution on it. The IO is acceptable. There's not that many USB ports on it, which is a bit of a downer but I feel like that's quite common for laptops these days. Another thing that I quite like about the pavilion is that it's relatively upgradable so you just need to undo seven screws and then you actually don't have to do that much ripping to get the back off uh, but once you have it off you have access to both the RAM slots which are under a sticker but you just pull the sticker off and then there's also an M.2 slot. You can also add a 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive if you want like a games drive on it so yeah, that's not too bad for a laptop. But that's not really the main reason we're here, is it? Let's see how these two compare when it comes to the benchmarks. Let's start off this comparison with Battlefield 5 running at 1080p medium settings, where you can see that the 1060 is definitely doing a better job. Now, part of this could be due to the fact that Battlefield 5 does like to emasculate smaller RAM capacities, but the GTX 1650 in the laptop is pegged at 98% utilization during the test, so I'm not sure how much of a difference more RAM would make. That's something that we'll test later on in the video. Interestingly, despite the HP's lower average frame rate, they do have the same 1% lows. In terms of temperatures, you can see that the pathetic little EVGA cooler on the 1060 is definitely struggling. Although, in terms of the 1650 and the laptop, those are some sexy laptop temperatures, although the CPU's not faring as well. When it comes to GTA 5 running at 1080p high settings, you can see that the RAM utilization difference between the two setups is smaller than it was with Battlefield 5. Now, in terms of average frame rates, there is a bit of a smaller difference between the two, but interestingly, again, the 1% lows are roughly the same. So the performance difference seems to manifest in the average frame rate and not so much in the dips. When it comes to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a more demanding game than the previous two, running at 1080p medium settings, they're actually pretty close to each other. There is a bit of a performance difference in favor of the 1060, but I'm surprised at how well the 1650 in the laptop actually holds up in this title. Although the 1650 in the laptop is just shy of maintaining 60 frames per second in the more demanding parts of the scene. But with that, let's have a look at a couple more benchmarks before we throw a 16 gig kit of RAM into the laptop to see how much that helps. The 
The group test just continues along the same theme we established with the individual games. The GTX 1060 is just a faster piece of silicon than the 1650 in the HP laptop. Although, the HP laptop did hold up very well, and all of these games, aside from Assassin's Creed, were very playable at 1080p with reasonable settings. Like, the games still looked nice, and they still felt pretty good. So, in the modern, current market, if you have about $700 for a gaming system, the HP Pavilion Aroma Dispenser is actually not that bad. And another thing is that the 1060 holds up really well. If you have a 6 gig variant of the 1060, which apparently most of you do, you've still got a fine graphics card that even with like AAA titles, be it with the settings turned down a bit, but even with AAA titles, it's really holding in there. And then finally, let's replace that 8 gig kit running at 3200 megahertz with a 16 gig kit running at 3200 megahertz. Um, well, I tried. I went and bought a 16 gig kit that's rated for 3200 megahertz, something that's relatively rare for laptop RAM. Well, I just found out that the crucial ballistics kit that I bought that says it's specifically rated for 3200 megahertz uh, actually isn't. On the HP Pavilion, it runs at 2666 megahertz, and there are like a bunch of people in the Amazon comment section of the video saying that it also doesn't run at the rated speed on their laptops. Uh, with this HP Pavilion, I couldn't even use something like Ryzen Master to manually overclock it because it doesn't recognize the 5600H. Which means for the next couple tests, the 16 gig configuration is going to be running at 2666 megahertz, where the 8 gig configuration is going to be running at 3200 megahertz, which may impact the performance considering that Ryzen does like it some memory bandwidth. Starting off again with Battlefield 5, uh, it's promising because you can see that the system is using the additional RAM that's available to it. However, the averages are pretty much the same, but I think that that's due to that GTX 1650 already being pegged at 99% utility utilization, so I don't think it has much more frame rate to give. However, the 1% lows did see a considerable improvement, which is pretty cool. And the next up is GTA 5, which, uh, yeah, that didn't really benefit. If anything, the 16 gig configuration actually ran a little bit slower, and I think that that is due to the bandwidth difference between the 16 gig and the 8 gig configurations. Uh, so the moral of the story here is if you do want to buy one of these laptops, just buy it from HP with 16 gigs of RAM at 3200 megahertz from the factory, because apparently HP RAM is magic and other RAM is filled with syphilis and buyer's remorse. Which brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Check out our merch in the link in the description below. And until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.